I think you'll find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve these cases. Choose an icon to hear a description. Choosing this icon puts a notebook at your fingertips. I believe you'll find that your notebook is your greatest detective tool. Use it to keep track of names and places that you believe you might want to investigate. When you do decide upon a person to question or a place to research, first go to your notebook, choose the appropriate name, then choose the horse and carriage. You will be off and running. Because the Baker Street regulars are often critical to solving a case, I've included them in your notebook. Use them wisely. This gives you access to the London Directory. In it, you will find everyone you need to query in your attempt to solve these cases. The directory is also the source for your notebook. Simply choose a name or place in the directory and drag it over into your notebook for easy reference. You may also use the directory much like your notebook. First, choose your intended destination, then choose the horse and carriage, and you'll have another way to get from one place to the next. Body found in the tent. Read it in the Times. Holmes has always claimed that the newspaper is a treasure of information when one can read between the lines. When you are ready to consult the Times, you may of course have a look at your paper copy or simply choose here for a close-up view. Choose this horse and carriage after you have chosen your destination from either your notebook or the directory. It will take you where you want to go. The Baker Street Irregulars are an untidy bunch of young street boys who happen to be on the proper side of the law. They have an undeniable knack for bringing back priceless bits of information in a fraction of the time it would take Holmes or myself. When you want to summons them, first choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose the Irregulars. In no time at all, they will return with whatever details they were able to unearth. When you believe you have directed Holmes to all of the right and proper places, and you have enough information to name the murderer and the motive, choose this icon. Mr. Holmes' files provide a wealth of information that he has been collecting over the years. Some of it is quite pertinent to the various cases, and some of it offers simply a fascinating and informative sidelight. When you want to access the files, First choose the destination from your notebook or the directory, then choose here when you want to see what relevant information Holmes might already have at hand. London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's afoot.
Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's time. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Sir Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. This gentleman is the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumored that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. You can learn much from old HR if you can follow the twists and jumps of his thinking. Head clerk Disraeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. Now here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, especially on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Jolly good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the great London Library. It is a wealth of information. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. This is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. What rubbish! What balder there! You must have read something terribly disturbing, Watson, for you to be so overwrought this early in the morning. Indeed, Holmes. It's irresponsible of the times to play upon people's superstitions. Ah, you must be referring to the affair of the mummy's curse. It has the entire city in an uproar. Three men dead, and they expect us to believe that a 4,000-year-old mummy was the murderer. I'm surprised you haven't taken some interest in this case, Holmes. To the contrary, my dear Watson. I have made some inquiries. Because, I dare say, I do believe this murderer is a much younger chap.
beg your pardon, but could I have a word with you, Sir Jasper? Ah, uh, Dr. Watson, of course. Are you investigating the death of Samuel Sneed? I just finished with him. Uh, no, we're interested in James Windebank. Ah, the mummy's latest victim, of course. <laughs> Now, who hired Holmes for this one? <laughs> King Tut? Oh, <laughs> a jolly good one. Actually, we don't have a client on this one. Eh, just for fun, eh? Well, about the only thing I can tell you is that that mummy has very powerful hands. What do you mean? The trachea was crushed along with one of the vertebrae of the neck. Death was instantaneous. Snap. But the papers report say that the, there were mummy wrappings found round the neck. Uh, just window dressing. Uh, without question, it was bare hands. The bruises and the way that the vertebrae was crushed leave no doubt about that. Thank you very much for your time, Sir Jasper. We're very much appreciative. Uh, not at all, Watson. Uh, you will let me know when you've convicted the mummy. Beg your pardon? Uh, so I can perform an autopsy on him. Would be most fascinating, don't you think? Pettigrew wrote this book over 50 years ago, and there's still nothing better on the subject. Fascinating. Just fascinating. And what can I do for you today, Whitson? It's Watson, sir. Watson, yes, of course. We're interested in what you may have learned about this mummy case. Oh, so these days it's mummies you're chasing down with that fella, Helms. It's Holmes, sir. This is what I said now, isn't it, Whitson? Yes, I believe you did, sir. Uh, let me show you what I found so far. Uh, this is the bit of linen that was found round the neck of James Windebank. I examined it thoroughly and it is quite old, perhaps thousands of years. However, it is not the murder weapon. Are you certain of that? Aye. The linen is quite old, but it's not at all strong enough to strangle a grown man. Very interesting, sir. I also found something quite fascinating. Uh, take a look through this glass. Uh, do you see those short hairs on the fabric? They look precisely like hairs. Of course they look like hairs, but what kind of hairs? They're not human hairs, they're dog hairs. Now, look at this. This piece of linen was found round the neck of the victim on board the ship. Well, his name was Leatherby or something. Uh, it is also quite old, and on it I found more hairs. More dog hairs? No, my dear man, monkey hairs. I've not yet been able to identify the precise species, but it's just extraordinary, isn't it? Why? Well, what do you think it all means? Well, I'm not the sort who likes to jump to conclusions, Whitson, but I can assure you that neither of these bandages were the murder weapons. This appears to have been a royal waste of time. Why is that, Holmes? There's not a soul in sight.
they had absolutely no information pertaining to this case. I thought not, Watson. It appears that we've wasted our time. It appears that no one is in. However, can you tell, Holmes? There is a sign on the door that says, We are gone for the day. How terribly observant, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. How unlucky. No one seems to be around. It's quite amusing, all this hoopla over a mummy's curse, I must say. Not so amusing, of course, the murder of three Englishmen. Have any of your reporters uncovered anything new? Actually, I've been in Paris the past several weeks. Just returned to London on Tuesday. I've had no involvement with the writing of any of these articles. I believe they are all the work of Philip Travis. He's one of our young reporters. For a short time, he was the Egyptian correspondent. Was he sacked? No, no. He returned to London just a few days ago. I gather he was reassigned to cover the case from here because he had some familiarity with the murder in Egypt. Do you know Travis? No. Never actually met the chap, although I hear he's a bit of an odd duck. Thanks for your help, Henry. Anytime. Let me know when you catch the mummy. That's one scoop I'd like to get. 